it concerns what you said earlier on about the compromisation of Z. Um, and we all know he's a pan-Africanist. But I, I mean, do you believe um, our law being um, the, the, how do you say, the leader of the Western, uh, Western region? Why do you believe he wasn't compromised? Because, I mean, he went to Britain to study. Do you believe they felt like his his views actually fitted their scheme? Because, I mean, I, I would imagine that uh, uh, Awolowo's um, vision would not be, uh, how do you say, most uh, tenable to British, uh, the, the British, um, how do you say, uh, policy or movement at the time? Yeah, good question. Um, I think there are a couple of reasons that I might offer as to why our law was not compromised in the same way. Uh, the first is this, that um, as I said, Azikwe's uh, exposure was as a result of the difficulties that he was having in finding work to the point that he had attempted suicide and as I said earlier this is from his own hand from his own book he's very open about it it's an excellent book by the way if you can get a copy of it it's called My Odyssey and you felt for him having seen how hard he was working um, both in terms of his studies but at the same time supporting himself uh, working as a uh, a dishwasher, uh, a dishwashman um, in hotels, etc. Um, security guard. We've done. All, we've all done that kind of work, working as security guards to carry ourselves through the student life. Uh, and then you're faced with unemployment, um, and you're, you know, you know that your father's contributed funds for your education in the expectation that you will come back and you will get that job and you will um, you will be a success in your life. That exposed him. Anybody, if you read our law's autobiography, you will see that he was actually uh, a businessman and he was a very successful uh, cocoa trader. And so he had money. And then later on, he qualified uh, as a barrister. There was a point at which he himself uh, became bankrupt because the the cocoa trade now turned against them. The, you know, the Brits uh, fixed the market, if you like. You know, they had a commodities board, um, which wiped out a lot of the uh, indigenous traders. Um, and I, there was a passage where... Um, it was said that our law went to the auction of his goods, his own goods. He went there to try and buy some of his items back. That, that was uh, the character. So uh, a slight distinction in their uh, financial situations at different times, at different times. The second fact is this. I think that was the main one, because I think if, I would like to think that if Zeke was not exposed as as he became due to uh, circumstances beyond his control, uh, they would not have got him. You know, he was a radical. Uh, but even radicals can be broken. The, the other thing is that our law was much more wary and suspicious of the Brits. He didn't, it, it's in the books, he never used to socialise with them. And Harold Smith confirmed this. So when Governor Boudillon uh, was uh, in power in office uh, from 19, I think 1935 till around 1941 or so, whenever he will invite the nationalists for drinks, or to come and hobnob uh, with the British colonial officers. It's on record that our Lord need, didn't used to go. He had that um, aversion 
to them, if you like. It, it wasn't hatred, but it was uh, deep suspicion. So they couldn't get close to him in the same way. Well, they got it to him in a different way, if you recall the story, that he was then, they cooked up the charges against him, um, um, alleged treason plot, and they used that to lock him up. But in terms of being able to um, compromise him, they weren't able to. So I think that's that's it. different circumstances and um, arguably different characters. Mm -hmm.